After some months have gone by, a few things will likely happen. Your new tank high will start to wear off. Your corals will start consuming a lot more calcium and carbonate. And those weekly water changes will become much more of a drag. A dosing pump may blow away those doldrums and breathe new life into this hobby. Dosing pumps differ from utility pumps, wave makers, and return pumps in two significant ways. First, they are designed to pump much smaller amounts of water. And second, dosing pumps are highly accurate, so you're able to dose precise amounts. These two things make dosing pumps ideal for two-part dosing, automatic water changes, and the microdosing of anything from phytoplankton to coral aminos. But by far the most common use of dosing pumps is for two-part dosing or its one-part equivalent in something like Tropic Marin's All for Reef or Kalkwasser. Most dosing pumps function using peristalsis, so we call them peristaltic dosing pumps. The easiest way to understand this is by using the human body as an example. When you swallow food or liquids, your esophagus transports that food from your mouth to your stomach by use of constricting and relaxing muscles, which creates a wave-like movement that propels that food to your stomach. Let's take that same peristaltic movement over to our hobby. Instead of muscles, we have pumps with rollers that will propel that liquid towards its destination. To make it even more simple, let's just use this piece of silicone tubing as an example. When it's filled with liquid, the rollers in a peristaltic pump will push that liquid up and out, hence peristaltic movement. Based on the speed that the peristaltic pumps rotate, they can dose anywhere from one milliliters per minute to well over 100 milliliters per minute. With over 30 options available on our website, here are six things to consider to help you choose the right dosing pump. First up is the number of heads. This one's pretty simple. If you're dosing one thing, like Tropic Marin All Four Reef, you will need a dosing pump with one head. Two things, two heads. Number two is size. While most dosing pumps are quite small, they come in various shapes and sizes, so it's important to figure out where you're gonna put it and choose a dosing pump that will work in that location. Number three is the flow rate. This one can be a bit tricky for true beginners out there because you don't have a frame of reference for how many milliliters you need to dose daily. But generally speaking, if you're using your dosing pump for an automatic water change system, you will need something that pumps a lot more, like 50 milliliters per day. But if you're dosing two-part Kalkwasser or Tropic Marin All for Reef, then you don't need nearly as much flow, so a one milliliter per minute option works just fine. The fourth consideration is is the lifespan of the pump itself. Some less expensive dosing pumps out there, such as the Camor X1, have a continuous running life of around 2,000 hours. Whether or not that sounds like a lot to you, if you're only dosing 10 milliliters of liquid a day, I estimate that that Camor tank will run for around 30 years. But if you need to dose 100 milliliters a day, it goes from 30 years down to three years. The fifth consideration is mounting options. Some dosing pumps, like this BRS dosing pump, can be mounted to a wall or the inside of a wooden cabinet stand, while other options just have to be placed on their own feet. The sixth and final dosing pump consideration, controllability. These BRS dosing pumps don't have any built-in controls, so you will need to pair them with some sort of timer. The Bubble Megas line of dosing pumps have built-in controls, so you're able to program them directly in the unit itself. And lastly, you have wireless controls, as found in Camor, Red Sea, Ecotech, and Neptune Systems dosing pumps. All of these come with an app and are programmable on the fly. What was our choice for dosing pump? This one was actually really easy to choose because the one we went with is by far the most popular option here at BRS, and we're talking about the Bulk Reef Supply two-part doser. If you're gonna be two-part dosing, one-part dosing, something like Kalkwasser or Tropic Marin All for Reef, or dosing coral aminos or some sort of suspended phytoplankton, then go with the 1.1 milliliter per minute option. But if you intend to use these pumps to do an automatic water change, then the 50 milliliter per minute option is the best one for you. Since there are no programming functions built into these pumps themselves, you will need to pick up some sort of timer. If you have an aquarium controller such as the Neptune Apex, then the EB8 bar will work just fine. Here at BRS, we sell save a watt digital timers, but any sort of timer or Wi-Fi power strip will work just fine. 
Step one for setting up your new dosing pump is determining the daily dosing levels. Let's use Tropic Marin All for Reef as our example. Test alkalinity at the same time every day for several days to determine how much is being depleted daily. Following the directions on the container, just increase or decrease how much you dose every single day until you find that perfect amount. Step number two, setting up your doser. Completely remove both the inlet and outlet nuts. Slide the nuts down each tube just a few inches. Make sure to keep the threads pointed toward the short end of the tube. Push the tube onto the inlet side of the BRS doser marked with an arrow pointing toward the pump. Be sure to push the tube all the way on the nipple. Then tighten the compression nut by hand. Do the same with the tube on the outlet side of the BRS doser marked with an arrow pointing away from the pump. Step number three, calibrate. Place the inlet tube into a jug of solution or water. Place the outlet tube into a 100 milliliter cup. Turn on the doser until the tubing is completely purged with the water or solution and then unplug the doser from the power source. Turn on the doser for exactly 10 minutes. Check how much solution or water is in the measuring cup. Divide this number by 10 to determine how many milliliters the pump emits for its particular setup. Step number four, install. Find a convenient place for the BRS doser in your system setup. Place the inlet hose into the desired two-part jug and position the outlet tube in a high flow area of the tank. To prevent clogging, do not submerge the outlet hose. Determine how long the pump needs to operate to dose the desired amount. For example, to dose 33 milliliters of two-part a day, divide 33 by 1.1, and you'll find that the pump needs to run for 30 minutes. Plug the BRS doser into a digital timer or aquarium controller and set it for the amount of time determined in the last step. I've made a lot of near catastrophic dosing pump mistakes in my time in this hobby, from placing the output lines too close together, not testing enough, and back siphoning aquarium water into my dosing pump container. Set up your dosing pump correctly by watching this video right here. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing, be well. We'll see you next time.